Welcome back to NPTEL course on game theory. In the previous session, I introduced the support of mixed strategies and then using the support enumeration how we can try to compute a Nash equilibrium. Now of course, if you look at it, uh, we the algorithm actually asks to verify the some set of uh, inequalities for every k sized subsets. So, it is a lot more complex in terms of uh, computing because it requires exponential you need to verify all subsets of size k and k is running for. So, the is there a better way of doing it? So, that is the question which Lemke Hausen algorithm answers. So, we will now go back to the uh, start looking at this Lemke Hausen algorithm, then we start understanding how the algorithm works. Okay. So, in the previous class, I also have introduced this polyhedron, polytopes and other things and I have not said why they are required. So, in this session we will see them. Okay. So, just to recall the non-degenerate condition is something that we have made. So, I will recall once again the definition of this thing. So, you take a bimatrix scheme a comma b and then I call this as a non-degenerate if for every x y in delta 1 cross delta 2 support of x the size of it is less is uh, greater than equals to support of y if y is best response to x. If y is the best response to x, then the support of x must be bigger than support of y. Similarly, support of y should be bigger than or equals to support of x. If x is best response y. So, in fact, this is essentially the idea. So, for an equilibrium the support of x and support of y are going to be the same. So, that is a reason that uh, support enumeration algorithm works. Okay. So, now we will introduce certain uh, polytopes. So, before that so, another assumption that we will make is that A and B no zero column. So, so this is actually not a really a serious assumption. The reason is that suppose if A and B have some 0 column, what I can always do is that I can add all the entries by a fixed quantity. Take A prime to be A i j plus some alpha. Similarly, B prime you take it to be B i j plus beta let us take it because I have added uh, constant to all the entries, same constant to all the entries. If you really look at the equilibrium structure, will not change. So, whatever is equilibrium for A and B original game is equilibrium to A prime and B prime. Similarly, any equilibrium for A prime B prime is also equilibrium for A and B. So, which is a, a trivial exercise just if you write down the best response condition that becomes a simple fact. So, 
in that sense this matrices a and b having no 0 column is a kind of a not really a serious assumption. So, the, but we assume these conditions throughout this session. So, therefore, now we made it made two assumptions one is the non degeneracy and other is no 0 column. Okay. Now, uh, let me define the certain sets. So, P 1 bar is the set of all x comma v in R m cross R such that x greater than equals to 0, b transpose x less than equals to v 1 comma x transpose 1 is 1. So, I will introduce this is basically a vector of 1s, this is also vector of 1s appropriate dimensions. Similarly, p 2 bar I will define it as y u in R n cross R such that y is greater than equals to 0, a y is less than or equals to u 1 and y transpose is 1. So, again this one is vector of 1s all of them. So, what is really we are saying here? So, this is uh, x greater than or equal to 0 b transpose x less than or equal to v. So, what is this meaning? So, let us try to understand this one. So, b transpose x less than or equal to v sequence of 1s. Now, if I take the x comma b y this is nothing but b transpose x y. So, because these are all positive these things. So, this is going to be b transpose x is less than equals to v 1. So, therefore, this is less than equals to v. So, what it says is that, so if look at you are looking at x the player 1's this thing uh, player 1's mixed strategy if he is playing x the player 2 cannot get more than v. Okay. So, that is a, there is exactly this condition b transpose x less than equals to v says. So, the player 1's best possibility is not more than v, he will get at the most v, we do not know what exactly he will get it. So, in a similar fashion this says is that if the player 2 is using y mixed strategies and player 1 will not get more than u that is exactly what this condition says. So, these are known as the best response polyhedrons ok. So, the p 1 bar p 2 bar are the best response polyhedron. Now, the next question that I would like to ask is that is it a polytope? So, if you really look at it this v because this is only a v is an upper bound but anything bigger than 1 v will also work. So, therefore, this is only a polyhedron not really polytope. So, in a sense this best response polyhedron p 1 bar contains all the mixed strategies of player 1 and it also contains a scalar v which is going to be the maximum pay that player 2 will get. And similarly, in the p 2 bar this is the all the mixed strategies of uh, player 2 together with a value u and the player 1 cannot get more than u. So, this is basically the best response polyhedron. So, in a sense this v is upper bound for player uh, once v is an upper bound for player 2's payoff u is an upper bound for player 1's payoff here ok. So, so what will happen here is that now let us look at p 1 bar ok. 
let us say one of the constraints we have is x k greater than or equal to 0. Suppose this let us say assume x k is equal to 0. Suppose if we assume that in this polyhedron uh, you take some x and let us assume that x k is equal to 0. That means what? this k is in S1 is not played in, in x. Okay. So, that is the meaning of it and then similarly let us say B transpose x let us say some L is less than equals to u and suppose this happens with equality. That, that is B transpose x L is u. So, that means the lth coordinate of B transpose x is exactly u. What it means is that the L in S2 is best response of player 2 to x because if player 1 is playing x player 2 best response is nothing but is pure best response is L. So, the polyhedron the polyhedron P bar P1 bar lives in Rm plus 1. This is inside Rm plus 1 and it has one equality constraints. In fact, you can uh, verify that it is m dimensional polyhedron. So, I will not go into proving this uh, uh, dimensionality thing which, which I will ask you to verify, but for the future we will not require the proof of this fact. So, I will omit these details. Okay. So, this immediately tells me that any extreme point if you take it okay if you take any extreme point of p1 bar if we take it so the inequality uh, the inequality constraints because the dimension i said it is m so, therefore, m of the inequality constraints have to be satisfied with equality. Okay. So, so, therefore, an extreme point x v corresponds to a situation where support of x is equals to k for some k less than equals to m. And at least k pure strategies of player 2 are best responses 
to x. So, when we take x v is let us say it is an extreme point and if, if its support is k what we are saying the first is k has to be less than or equal to m because the dimension is cannot is cannot be more than m. So, k has to be less than or equal to m and because at least k pure best responses of player 2 because k of this inequality k of these inequalities have to be satisfied with equality. So, uh, because the dimension is m, so any extreme point in any extreme point if the support of x is k, k has to be less than or equal to m and because of that one because the inequalities have to be strict at those k this thing. So, wherever that inequality is equality that becomes a best response. So, that is exactly what I am trying I am saying here that so at least k pure strategies of player 2 are best responses to x. So, this is a this comes essentially from that by the definition of p, p 1 bar ok. So, this particular thing becomes in equality wherever this is equal that becomes a best response to x. So, that is basically that. of course, uh, we are assuming non degeneracy. So, the non degeneracy we are assuming because of this. So, the exactly k will be okay, there will be k pure best responses. Player two. Okay, so this is uh, the non-degeneracy is going to give it. Of course, in an analogous statement, we can make it for the other uh, p two bar. So let's not worry. Now, so what I will do is that so if we really, as I said, this polyhedron is not bounded. So what now I will do is that. And make something simpler. Let me recall what is P1 bar is we have this xv such that the most important thing is B transpose x less than or equals to v and other conditions. So, I would like to avoid this v. So, and then what I now define is that I do not make the probability distribution I take any x in R m such that B transpose x is less than or equals to 1 that is the vector of 1s comma and x is a non-zero vector. So, what we have now done is that so I have uh, made the unit pay in B transpose x is cannot be more than 1 no entry of p transpose x is less than equals more than 1 and all non negative vectors. So, it is a when I divide this b transpose x this v if I brought bring this side x by v now x by v need not be a probability vector. So, that is a simply a non zero vector that is exactly what I have done while in defining this p. So, this p allows me to reduce this v I put uh, p 1 and uh, p 2 is for the player uh, 2 such that of course y greater than equals to 0 and then a y less than equals to 1. So, in a way these are these vectors are sir normalized ok. So, instead of now mixed strategies we have now looked at this normalized. So, these, these are they are not mixed strategies. So, they are not mixed strategies and most important thing is that the origin 0 0 0 belongs to P 1 as well as the 0 vector in R m belongs to P 1, 0 vector in R n belongs to P 2. So, therefore, the vectors in x 
will also have a 0 vector, but non 0 vector when you take it I can always make a probability vector. So, this is the idea that we use it. Okay. So, what we have said is that so if I take x comma v in p 1 bar then what I have is that this x by v is going to be in p. So, this is the main point here. Okay. So, let us take x belongs to p 1 bar is an extreme point. Of course, assume this is not equal to 0. Then x by x transpose 1 1 by x transpose 1 is extreme point ok. So, here is a small error here this is not uh, x is in p 1 if it is an extreme point non zero extreme point then x by x transpose 1 comma 1 by x transpose 1 is extreme point of p 1 bar a similar result you can say about the p 2 bar and p 2. Okay. So, what I am trying to say here is that the extreme points of p 1 corresponds to extreme points of p 1 bar and similarly extreme points of uh, p 2 corresponds to extreme points of p 2 bar. So, this is going to play a important role in the future. Okay. So, now the our next goal is to understand the how to characterize these extreme points. So, let us go through that. So, for any point x and y for each x in p 1, y in p 2, I want to define what is called L x, this is basically the indices, I will define in the following way, k in S 1 such that x k is 0. That means, the if in this particular thing is essentially the support of x and j in S 2 such that b transpose x j is 1. So, wherever the b transpose x is that inequality corresponds to b transpose x is equality. So, we are looking at the wherever that inequalities are equalities. So, this is uh, the label of x. Similarly, the label corresponding to y is nothing but L in S 2 such that y L is equals to 0. This is the support of y union i in S 1 such that a y i is 1. Okay. So, this is what we are saying here is that first we started with the support of y and then the wherever that inequality corresponding to a y, a y less than equals to 1 that is the inequality wherever that inequality is strict look at those things and that we start calling it as L y. These are known as a labels of x and y. Okay. So, we say that x comma y belongs to p 1 cross p 2 is fully labeled if L x union L y is S 1 union S 2. So, if a pair of uh, strategies in P 1 and P 2 P 1 cross P 2 
if they are called fully labeled if Lx union Ly is nothing but S1 union S2. In fact, uh, now we have a following interesting lemma. in a non degenerate game for a pair of extreme points so we have the lx size of lx is m size of Ly is n. We will prove this in the next session and continue to go for the lemke hausen algorithm. We will stop here at, at this moment, we will continue in the next session. Thank you.